to our CEO, Patrick Phillips. He is our CEO, and he was a former uh, Apple executive here when Apple was actually here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. He is a best-selling author. He's written a couple of books and actually creating and working on co-authoring another book with Dr. Vicki Rackner, and you'll be ready to uh, be just anticipating to wait to hear back from that, and we might even talk a little bit about that where he is in there, maybe we get some behind the scenes secrets of what's going on with that. Uh, certainly he's been a motiv uh, rec nationally recognized motivational speaker. He's at, on the editorial board of a very large billing and coding magazine, which is called Billing and Coding Advantage Magazine. That is a hard copy magazine. It's not just an e-magazine or like some of us might think about and going, oh, everybody can just do that. This is actually a real printed magazine, third party. It has nothing to do with American business systems. Uh, he's actually been asked to be uh, um, a writer for them, and he's actually, again, on the editorial board. And he's also the founder of the Medical Revenue Managers Association of America, which that's where Patrick is today. He is actually at our training class today working with some new medical revenue managers. Patrick, how are you doing there at that training workshop? It is fantastic. Uh, I just got through with our, our uh, introductory to medical marketing, and uh, I don't want to sound like Trump, but it was unbelievably huge. <laughs> huge, huge. <laughs> well, it's good. It, it is good to have you here. Now, I know that you're at the hotel. You're actually not at your office, which normally has a little bit better internet connection than what we're seeing right today. Uh, so if he, if we see that he kind of goes um, sounding like R2-D2 today, well, we just know that he's at the hotel with a little bit uh, less internet speed than he's normally uh, working with. But uh, we're going to get through this. I've good to have you here. I've got an ready to switch to if we need to, Eric. So you tell me if my sound is coming through uh, kind of crummy here and I can switch to this. Or I can just turn off the webcam, that might help. <laughs> well, either way, let's, let's try it uh, first like this and then I may have you just switch over and dial in and that might help us to hear you a little bit better. Well, let's, before we go any further, we always like to make sure that people re are reminded about the question box because uh, folks, this webinar is for you. Uh, it is help for us to help answer your questions. Certainly, we're going to go through several different reasons why people do fail in uh, their startup businesses. Uh, but if you want to ask very specific questions to us, to Patrick and I today, we'll do our best to get in all the questions. And so, uh, looking at the clock right now, we've got about 50 more minutes to get through this particular webinar. And so, we're just going to jump right on in here. And so, Patrick, obviously, you and I have been talking about this for quite some time now, and we've been talking about why people fail in a new business and why you won't, those that are actually on this call looking to get involved in medical billing. So my question back to you, Patrick, uh, why do you say that? Well, uh, you know, obviously I, I'm kind of uh, prejudiced in that I think we've got a pretty, uh, pretty good system for training people on how to get a, not just to do medical billing, but how to get a medical billing business actually started. Uh, you know, without clients, you don't really have a business, and uh, a lot of people struggle to try to find their first client. That's what we kind of specialize in for the last 22 years. And uh, so one of the things that you can know that this is a real business is by looking at some of the articles that have come out just recently telling doctors that they should be outsourcing their billing. That's that's what we teach people to do is go out and uh, educate doctors on that. So uh, we ran across an article here just uh, came, out, came out yesterday or the day before, I think. Didn't it, Eric? Yeah, December the 8th, uh, so just uh, last week, really. Uh, this is a, um, a website, and we're actually going to share with you the website uh, address here in just a second. But, folks, if you're on the webinar right now and you're jotting down notes or typing out notes, you could literally just Google this title, Economic Pressures Bolster Case for Outsourcing Billing. Now, this is not coming from a billing website. It's coming from... Physicians practice uh, practice practice your way. So this is this is this is a completely different type of, of uh, website. So 
you can go out there and and what's interesting here by this author Janet she's saying here how uh, battling declining reimbursements Patrick and rising operating costs many physicians are feeling pressure to rein in expenses however paying a third party to manage the revenue cycle is one cost they can actually improve your bottom line experts say isn't that what we're teaching that class there today Eric this this whole article could have been written by uh, me uh, or right. one of our staff members uh, it's it's a wonderful testimonial to the fact that we have a solid business opportunity in that doctors are being told by people who know more than we do even uh, here at physicianpractice.com uh, why they should be outsourcing. I mean, this is a tremendous uh, quote here that you've got underlined. Exactly. I'm going to share a few more, but the, if you go back, just to, you know, let's just go back one. Let me see if I can get to here. Let me just go back one uh, slide here. And again, we're 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 seeing why some businesses fail. And Patrick, wouldn't you agree that some businesses fail because really there's just not a market for it? But what we're finding through articles like what we're seeing here we're actually seeing that this is this is creating a foundation why our business in medical billing uh, revenue cycle management is just increasing and and again you can't get any better than December the 8th 2015 right and and uh, physicianspractice.com has been around a long time a lot of doctors go to this site so they're they're being educated for us and for our licensees by uh, websites like this one. And, and so what I've done, Patrick, I've, I've kind of broken out a little bit of some of these the uh, quotes from this. Certainly we can't go through the entire article, but uh, John Bolin of Navigate Healthcare Symmetrics uh, continues to say, say here in this particular article. I'll just read it and then I'll let you comment on it. Since the greater, uh, the greater the economic pressure on a practice, the more viable outsourcing becomes. Outsource billing, outsourcing billing processes should ultimately reduce the cost of collections and maximize revenue, allowing a practice to invest, it, invest in clinical resources and get better quality results. Uh, comment, Mr. Phillips, on that one? <laughs> well, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, <laughs> just think about it. That the economic pressure on a medical practice. Right now, they're being hit by all sorts of things, new electronic medical records, uh, the implementation of ICD-10 into their practice, uh, all the new codes. This is just, uh, they are feeling the pressure right now, believe me. And that means that it's even more viable for doctors to outsource. Uh, Eric, uh, as I just talked to class, the doctors, that's not their core competency, billing, dealing with insurance companies. Uh, why not turn that over to a specialist, just like they do their bookkeeping, over to a CPA? Right. Exactly. We're going to look at one more uh, little quote here. Obviously, there's several different quotes through here, and this is by Nancy Eno. She's a certified coding instructor. Uh, so, you know, she's got some pretty good credentials here. She says the pressure to upgrade technology and train staff to use it has further complicated the billing processes. Well, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Many practices are looking to third-party billing companies as technology partners to help them keep up to date with changes in EHR and practice management systems, which is crucial to meeting quality standards and qualifying for insurer-based financial incentives. Yeah, you know, Eric, uh, we have a couple in the class uh, today, uh, the Websters. They are. Uh, they looked at this business originally about two years ago. Mm -hmm. He developed a business plan that was a multi-page, full-color uh, presentation that he gave to me when he met me here at the hotel. Now, this was two years ago. This business is so real that in the last two years, he's done the due diligence on this business to make sure that it was something that they wanted to do and it was profitable. And he right. says, the more I looked into it over these last two years, they were putting their funding together also. He said, right. the, the, the more real it became. Right. 
Now, this is this is something. This is a graph that you and I kind of looked at. Oh, probably maybe even at the first of the year. But this 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 is showing the growth in healthcare spending uh, over the last few years, all the way through 2020. And we can see that you know we're talking that uh, the healthcare cost. Uh, 101 is just going through the roof, and it will end up going up to four point trillion dollars by the end of 2002. So again, as we're looking through 2020, uh, yeah, thank you, 2020. Uh, as we're looking through, through, trying to think, you know, what business is good for us? Uh, certainly, we won't want in a growth spurt. I, I would think healthcare and health spending is one of those as well. Yeah, if you look at that chart, if I were just thinking about, uh, let's see, what industry should I get involved in? You want one that looks like this from uh, one decade to the next. Look how hugely that's growing from 2010 to 2020. It's going to double. Yes, so I that's, mean, a, that's a good that's a good industry to get involved in for sure. Well, this is another one. This is something you found, and we're about to get started in some of the reasons why uh, people do fail and why they may not fail with us. But you found this, and this is you're telling me this is literally a map put out by the government. And you know that hasn't shown up yet on my screen, so I don't know what we're looking at there. But uh, it's just a big uh, graphic. Oh yes, oh I yes. When I first saw this, I thought it was a joke. This is our health care system uh, uh, under the Obama administration. This is what our health care system looks like now. And uh, wow, it's still loading. It's a pretty heavy duty graphic, I guess. Or my, it's probably slow here in the hotel. But, you know, this is why doctors want to outsource this. This is overwhelming to them. They, they don't right. even know where to begin uh, to make sure that they fit into and have connected all the dots, so to speak. Yeah, so this this is um, th you know imagine someone's looking to get into medical billing, they may not have a background, and they're trying to decide, wow, do I spend that money with American business systems or try to do this on my own? Uh, folks, there is a lot that you just may not know, and that's the reason why we're here because we want to help you uh, not have to try to reinvent the wheel. So. We we kind of we we have to stay up on all this, and it changes pretty fluidly. So yes. even though that we know it as best we can, it you know what's today may be something different tomorrow. So uh, that's one of the reasons why today we're going to be talking again about why would I want to get involved with medical billing? But what do you got well, there? Well, look, this is uh, USA Today. There's today's date, and uh, this is uh, the major headline here. On this here jump, uh, Eric, what other industry has this sort of coverage? This is kind of a crude, uh, low-tech way of sharing something. For those of you live, you're getting to see this. Those of you listening to the recording, you can just imagine. But it's a huge, takes up the whole front page, talking about healthcare costs. Uh, it's just a big industry, and it's a, uh, it's a good one to be involved in for sure. Exactly. Now, I will say, Patrick, you're kind of coming in a little uh, robot-y at times, so. You may want to switch over to your phone and just dial in, and um, that might be a, a, a help there. But uh, uh, I, am, I am on here, uh, Eric. If you look in the uh, the attendees, I think you'll find me there. And if you want to uh, unmute me, I, I should be ready to. Okay. Yeah. Let me get that and unmute you there. And now you can unmute yourself there, I believe. Yes, I think that's right, and I'm going to whoops, whoops, turn off that mic and this speaker. Okay, Eric, I think I'm on. Am I? Yes, can you hear me still? Eric? Yeah, can you hear me? You, you, oh, yeah, yeah, I got you now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, that sounds much better. Okay. All right, so one of the questions that we just asked is why would anybody want to get involved in medical billing? One is the Affordable Care Act, and Patrick... Let's just re briefly kind of go over that because I think sometimes we get lost in the shuffle of thinking, oh, well, the Affordable Care Act has kind of come and gone. Uh, you know, what's the deal with Obamacare is what we know as, as, as Affordable Care Act. It still leaves these things that we're bringing up here. There's still 30 million uninsured Americans uh, here in the United States, and this brings great concerns for the doctor. Uh, so 
this is one of the reasons why you do want to get involved in medical billing because as a consultant to the doctor, you can help them navigate through some of the issues that are going on with a, a affordable, the Affordable Care Act. And then Patrick, as we kind of see this, and we're starting to finally start to see this, that there's going to be a shortage of doctors by the end of 2015. We're already starting to see some of that there. And I'm going to put this last one in, and then we, you and I can finally, finally dis discuss this a little bit. But doctors will need help with billing so they can focus on some of these new patients. So we've got the rise in uninsured Americans and hurry up and get into the Affordable Care Act, trying to get their insurance. Then you've got this shortage of doctors. Uh, that is just overloading the doctors. Yeah, it's bad news for the doctors that will uh, be in practice because they have to see that many more patients uh, each day and taking the billing out of their office, uh, which which a lot of them have done already, of course. Uh, but Eric, we've found that the doctors who have outsourced are some of the best prospects for our client, uh, our licensees, because they already know the advantages of outsourcing. They just uh, don't like uh, what they're getting from that outsourced solution because they don't have the technology that we have. Right. Uh, now this this quote, I mean, you found directly out of the New England Journal of Medicine about you know how you know when people well when doctors are trying to do their own billing, there's sometimes up to 24 cents of every dollar are wasted just by administrative and billing expenses. You want to kind of go in a little bit more details about that? Yeah, if you think about it, Eric, if they're spending, uh, what is that, uh, almost 25 percent, 24 percent of of every dollar that comes into a practice, if they're wasting that on their administrative and billing expenses, uh, we can cut that way back because we train our licensees to go out and, of course, uh, charge a percentage of what is collected, but it's nowhere near 24 percent. I think the right. nationwide range is, uh, you know, between uh, 4 to 8 percent, and most of our licensees are getting, you know, on the higher end of that range because that's how we train them uh, to, to price it and to, right. uh, to negotiate the pricing. But uh, the point is that they can cut that 24 percent of, of, of expenses for doctors down to, uh, you know, as little as uh, 7 or 8 percent. Yeah, matter of fact, where, where Patrick got that 4 to 8 uh, average, it was out of that uh, article that we just went through on that website there. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, so be sure to go go take that look at that again. And then, uh, this is from the uh, American Academy of Professional Coders, Patrick. I mean, we're talking about these folks ha have found that the average number of rejected claims, now these are claims that have been submitted and for whatever reason that they, they've been rejected, uh, for a medical practice, that man, that that is around 34 percent. Now that's a huge number if you think about it. Yeah, and that's really what uh, you know is the average. There are doctors we have found licensees have run across doctors that have a 50 percent uh, rejection rate, and they think that's okay uh, because they don't know any better. Uh, of course, as you know, Eric, our our system because of uh, the leading edge technology that we use and the fact that we have our built in clearinghouse, we can get that rejection rate down to less than 2%. So we take right. it from 34% to less than 2% nationwide. That is what's unheard of, and the doctors absolutely are blown away when they see that much more money coming into their practice. That's correct. All right, so we're going to go through 10 reasons uh, right now as quickly as we can. We've got about 35 more minutes here just to kind of get through this web webinar today. So we're going to go through 10 different reasons why some people fail and why you won't. Number one reason, Patrick, uh, spending too much time and money on the technical aspect of the business. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, oh, I clicked it too quickly there. Some people want to ask us, well, what about, do I need to go to medical billing school? Patrick, why don't you talk a, a little bit about that part, you know, what separates American business systems from us and then someone going to a medical billing school? Well, uh, of course, there's college courses that you can take and uh, even some online courses out there that will teach you how to do medical billing. But again, as I referred to earlier, Eric, it's not all about just the technical aspects of doing the billing. It's how do I build a profitable business? So what people are doing and the reason they're investing with us in our business opportunity and coming down here to our live week-long training in Dallas is because they're getting the nuts and bolts as to how to get their first client as quickly as possible right. to get the pricing that they need and not underprice themselves in the marketplace and 
to be able to build that business as big as they wish. Eric, as you know, we have last season, they have over uh, three and 400 doctors. Right. So it, it's a huge market out there to be tapped. And uh, and then there's the coding, of course. Yeah, and, and people, a lot of people say, well, well, maybe I need to go get a coding degree or, or, or understand codes about this because there's, there's the medical billing aspect of it and then there's the medical coding part of the business as well and and obviously a lot of people kind of get stopped right there they think well gosh I gotta go learn all this before I can actually go start a business what Patrick just shared with you and he'll ex explain a little bit more here is that we're going to teach you how to build a business just using the vehicle of medical billing so we've got the support the technology as you'll see here through the presentation to cover the billing and the coding side of this yeah, so so people in business fail because they they focus on the technical aspects uh, more than uh, how to build it, uh, how to build a business. Let, let's take a painter for example. A painter might go to school and learn all about paints and colors and mixing paints and wallpapers and glues and. <laughs> well, I think we just lost Patrick there. Um, let's see. I think we just no. lost Patrick. Yep, there you are. Okay, you're back. Okay, am I back? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, I, I was just using the illustration of a, of a painter, for example, going to school and learning all about paint, colors, mixing the paints, and so forth, brushes. You, you don't. Without a client, there's no reason to learn all that. And right. so we, for the past 22 years, have focused on helping people build a profitable medical billing business, not just do the medical billing. And of course. As you know, Eric, our, uh, our coding is built into our system. Literally right. all of the medical codes are in the system. And the system will even help the doctor to choose the right codes to get the maximum uh, revenue for those codes, those visits. Yeah, matter of fact, since you're saying that, I'd like to uh, remind people here that you know, if you've got the opportunity you'd like to, we would be more than happy to share with you and do a live demonstration of our system for you. If you have not seen that, uh, get with your ABS business coach or the person that been, you've been working with here as you know as your rep or your business coach. Uh, they'll be happy to get that set up. I know a couple of weeks ago we actually asked the question, have you seen a live webinar yet? And we had several people that were on the webinar and says, gosh, they hadn't seen one yet. So if you're on here today, you're listening live today, uh, be sure to get back with the person that asked you to be here at this webinar and uh, we'll be happy to get that set up. And Patrick, this is kind of a quick snapshot of, uh, of the training class here real quickly, as maybe you're able to see here. But what people are learning is not necessarily how to do medical billing or coding. They're literally learning how to work and market to, to doctors and how to get that business. Yeah, how to find out what the pain is in, the, in that practice, how to uh, make a proposal, professional proposal, that shows them that they can you know, give the doctor the remedy for that pain, and uh, and then price it where it needs to be, where it's fair for the doctor, and uh, and where the licensee is making the maximum revenue for themselves as well. That's all a part of building a business. Not uh, has nothing to do with the the medical coding and uh, the actual uh, submitting of the claims. All right, so let's move on to reason number two: choosing the wrong technology. Now, you and I have been kind of going back and forth already about talking about technology and the different types of technology and Patrick I know that you you you've said on past webinars before that you and your wife or actually Linda started medical billing a long time ago and uh, technology back then was literally typing out the information and then you got into computer programs where you literally you know loaded this on your computer and there are still medical billing um uh, programs out there that you still have to load and maintain. Talk about real quickly about that. Yeah, server-based software it's called. Uh, it's actually on your hard disk in your computer or maybe you put a portion of that on the doctor's computer so you can send stuff back and forth. But folks, that's old technology. Now we've taken that to the next level which is literally the next level. It's called the cloud. Yes. And put all of our system in the cloud and allowed people to uh, log in literally from any computer that's connected to the internet that has a browser, uh, any device, uh, iPad, tablet, uh, PC, Mac, it doesn't matter. It's all cloud-based. 
it, exactly. It is all cloud-based, uh, which, show, sh again, we're going to share with you here in a moment that uh, our, our iClaim system is always updated, uh, and you never have to maintain it. So it's not like, like you have to even go to the doctor's office to load uh, the computer program on the doctor's system. It's as easy as just getting set up there and giving the, that doctor and their staff a login uh, you will have a login, and immediately you have the software already ready to go. Well, this is where every uh, all software is moving to the cloud, if it's not there already. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, all the big players, of course, have moved all of their stuff to the cloud, and Apple, of course, has. And that's because... This is where it's best maintained. It's a way to make sure that when there is a bug or a fix of something, uh, it's automatically there. When you log in, you're using the latest version of our software no matter where you are anywhere in the world. It's always updated. Now, Patrick mentioned this just a while ago, and that the iClaim system uh, can also reduce the rejection rate less than 2%, and it's because... Uh, you're not having to worry about maintaining software. Uh, you're, you can focus in on what you're good at doing, which is helping that doctor collect. And uh, you can see here that in our system, there's all different types of graphs and reports that come up automatically to kind of keep you and the doctor informed about really what's going on with these claims because uh, we're, uh, we're not going to have time today to be able to go through this, but one of the key components in our software is that we've got a direct portal that takes us from the billing system to the insurance companies directly. Uh, no other system has this type of portal, and for those that uh, might want to know what that is, it is called a clearinghouse. We own our own clearinghouse. So for those that might know a little bit about medical billing, uh, you'll understand what that means. For those that don't, we do have some recorded webinars that Patrick and I have done before. You can certainly go back and listen to that. But that's why we can, with the, the technology uh, and it all being web-based, that's why we're able to collect as much money as we can for these doctors. Yeah, and, and for those of you still uh, wondering about the, the, the technology just boils down to this. Rather than having to upload a batch of claims each night to uh, this third-party entity called a clearinghouse and having them scrub it and then forward it on to the insurance companies, that's all done internally inside of our system, our iClaim uh, cloud-based system. So this is why, again, we can get that rejection rate down to less than 2%. All right, let's talk about reason number three of why people do fail and why we pretty com we're, we're confident that you won't fail with us. And I'm going to, before we even start this session, Bill is asking a question here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump over to his question. We're going to answer his question, and then we're going to get into some of the reasons why. But he did say, you know, how many, do you know, can you share the number of new licensees that give up after their first year or so and why? Um, Bill, it, it, it gets down to, to this. Everybody has their own level of success. Many people find their success with one or two doctors, but I would say that uh, there's really not a reason why people would want to give up because of the, the support that we give them. That people just won't find themselves doing this in front of their computers uh, <laughs> when, they, when they're uh, needing help or needing some support. Well, and because we do those weekly webinars, like we're doing this one, of course, for people looking into our business, we have webinars that are for our existing licensees that they are invited to. And so we continually motivate, train, inspire, and uh, educate our licensees to where there's no reason for them to ever give up because as long as you're doing what we are telling you on those webinars on a weekly basis, you will get a client. And folks, all you need is one. I, I just taught the class on uh, the intro to medical marketing, Eric, and, and that's what I emphasized is all you do is follow what we're going to teach you this week to get that first client, and then if you treat that client right and, and do a good job for them, the referrals will build your business automatically. It's just a, it's just an ongoing thing. Plus, of course, we have lifetime support, so that support from us and that training and those ongoing webinars at no cost to you are always there for you to tap into. And, and what makes it even better, Bill, I'm not sure if you know about this, but we here at our support 
department, uh, what we're trying to demonstrate as best we can through these graphics here is that we are doing live demonstrations of the software personally for your doctors. Uh, and so we, we through that week of training where Patrick is today, uh, obviously there's a there's a step one, two, and three before you actually get to the demo uh, with the doctors. But if, if that process is followed, we're going to find people finding more success. But Patrick, I don't want to uh, sidestep his question. We do know some people have failed, in, especially right after getting out of class, and it's just because they try to go do it differently they're, than what we thought, right? Yeah, they're, they're reinventing the wheel. Hey, uh, our instructor uh, that's down here this week, uh, Cynthia Anderson, she's from Arizona. She's been in this business now for, uh, I think, going on eight years. And she'll tell you that she went out and tried a lot of things on her own. She has a marketing degree, Eric. So uh, to her, that meant that she was smarter than we were. And she went out and tried things that she had learned in uh, college for marketing that didn't work. And right. when she finally gave up and said, you know what, even though some of the stuff that they taught didn't seem like it would work, when I went out and did those things, I got my first client within a couple of weeks. Yeah, so we would be... Um we, we certainly want to be open uh, about the transparency of what we do. We can't say 100% of people are finding complete success. Um, and again, because sometimes we, we're, this business is up to you. This business is completely up to you and the relationships that you learn how to build through our training class and those from whether they've come from a background of just being, gosh, a student, uh, uh, someone in construction, a truck driver, we've had those, we've had uh, business people, we've had sales reps, we've had all different types of people. And we find 100% of the people that are successful in this business, 100% of those people follow what we teach. Uh, so as long as you're following what we're teaching and you're sticking with it, then as Patrick said, you will end up getting a client because you, it's almost like you're going to end up stumbling over a doctor who's who's kind of who's having problems. Yeah. Now, our company name, American Business Systems, refers to the fact that we have a number of different systems that are available for our licensees to to utilize to build their business. But it also refers to the fact that we do have a system of going out and actually finding clients as well. And that's the biggest problem in most people's minds. That's why uh, whoever this was, I forgot the name, uh, asked asked the question. Uh, is because in their mind, Bill is thinking, okay, what if I don't ever get a client? Well, the only way that you could ever fail to get a client, Bill, would be to stop letting us mentor you and teach you on a regular basis uh, how to get that client. So anyway, we probably beat that horse. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's what's on people's minds, so that's what we want to yeah. be able to do. So yeah. that's good. And then plus, as Patrick says, we have a licensee support site, and in, in here, Past that live week of training, there's so much more that goes in in here and past that. So, all right, let's yeah, move on. You, when you ask for that live demo from your uh, ABS business development coach, ask them to show you a, a brief uh, view of this licensee support site. It is filled with hundreds of hours of training materials, documents, and other stuff for our licensees. All right, so reason number four that a lot of people just kind of stumble, they fail, they, they, may, they may fail at what their particular business might be, is outdated marketing methods and materials. So again, Patrick has just been sharing with you a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on out there in the marketplace of how to go out there and get doctors. Now, when we're talking about outdated things, outdated marketing materials, that alone, if you try something that's really outdated with doctors, especially with the newer doctors, you're going to really find a doctor is going to ask you, you want me to turn my billing over to you? And, <laughs> and you're so far behind on even showing how to market to me. Patrick, can you yeah. speak real quickly? Well, uh, I never mentioned the, this book or the author out loud, but those of you who are on the webinar that are looking at the slide right now, you'll see that this book is out there, I think, still on Amazon, and it is a book teaching you how to build a medical billing business, and it has 
several things in there that just do not work in today's world. Folks, we know what works, we know what doesn't work, and we're going to teach you only the things that actually work in helping you to get clients. Uh, putting your name up on a billboard, uh, using the yellow pages, uh, I guess people still use those, but all of that is in this book. And it says to do those things to get clients. Those things don't work. So what we're saying is outdated marketing methods and materials that look like they were created uh, you know, in somebody's desktop publishing program, those are not what you need. You need some professional presentation materials. You need f folders and other things that we provide you that make you look like uh, somebody much larger you know, than somebody just working out of their spare bedroom, which you may be doing, but uh, nobody right. cares nowadays. <laughs> just don't look like with your marketing materials that you are. Exactly. It's 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 a lot of times we, we Patrick, I, you you and I have joked around about this. Sometimes it's not it's not what you know. It's not even who you know, but it's looking like you know. Yeah, and exactly. If you can do that, if you can look like what you know, and part of that is is with the marketing materials that we that we give you as a licensee, that is uh, professionally done. It's high quality, uh, heavy stock type of uh, paper here. And uh, and all all of these that you're seeing right here, whether it's the all of these different flyers that you see here, Audit Guard, Auto Card, Choice Pay, iDocs. Now, all of this you're going to get as a business package with us, and then you're going to get over 2,000 pieces of this material for you to use to help you go out there and build your business. Yeah, we'll even put your uh, we'll even put your name and logo and uh, contact information on these flyers as well. And exactly. uh, and we got postcards that can be personalized uh, as well. And that's what we're showing right now. So there's postcards. So, so all the marketing materials are, uh, you know, we've got, we're very fortunate here at American Business Systems to have a great team of designers. Uh, we've got one individual here that just does a superb job of helping us keep up with everything and making sure that we are ahead of that marketing curve of learning how to do things out there in the marketplace. Uh, whether it's via the web, whether it's printed, whether it's whatever, and then plus all the marketing materials that we teach our licensees and what they're giving us is feedback of what's working and not working out there. Again, there's no sense for anybody to have to go out there and reinvent the wheel on learning how to get involved in medical billing. So that's what we want to be able to do. Plus, Patrick, we have on that licensee support side video testimonials of other doctors that uh, as a licensee, they can actually use on their website. So we've got a complete, uh, all different types of marketing. So whether it's in print, whether it's in flyer form, or whether it's in video form, we've got the tools and to make you look like, uh, again, like you've been in business for 22 years. <laughs> Yeah, and the book, for example, that uh, Eric spoke about earlier that I co-authored there with a CPA, Cash Crunch to Cash Flow, that book can be utilized as a marketing tool with your contact information in the, in the inside of it. It's a great leave behind to educate the doctor and the office managers as to why they actually need to pay attention to their revenue because uh, if they don't, I can tell you they'll, they'll be out of practice soon, many doctors going out of practice. Absolutely. Because of the cash, because of the cash crunch. <laughs> yes, cash crunch. And then we also have um, trade show booths that you can actually use as well. So we have thought about just about every gamut of what you can think of, what you might end up needing as part of your marketing plans, whether it's the books, whether it's a, a trade show booth. You can see revenue cycle management back there in the background. Folks, we have what you need to get this business up and going, and we'll certainly be able to help you out with that. All right, we got about 15 more minutes, and we've got uh, a few more of these to get through, so let's get through these pretty quickly. Reason number five, offering only one product or service. Folks, you can't just walk in and say, hey, doc, do you need me? <laughs> right. Yeah, because they either are doing it themselves or they've already outsourced it to someone else. So how is it that our licensees are signing up uh, new clients every day all across the United States? It's because we teach them to handle not just the billing, but the revenue cycle of a medical practice, illustrated by this. So we go into detail in this in the training class, but guys, just trust me that there is more, more to it than just doing the billing. 
Right, and that's why Patrick mentioned earlier that we have all these different services. These are all ancillary type services, whether it's the Code Ride or Audit Guard or the Physician's Toolbox or iDocs now and Quick Claim, Choice Pay, Auto Auto Card. Um, folks, this is <laughs> it's just hard to, to put everything in, into you know an hour webinar to, uh, about all of these, but you know these can be door openers. They can be ancillary services. So when you go into a doctor's office, the doctor may not need billing right now. What they might need is a way to convert all their paper into an electronic, secured, HIPAA compliant document management system. That's iDocs now. Well, great. You get in the door with that. You start working with the doctor. Uh, you become friends with the staff. You become friends with the office manager. And over a bit of time, very short period of time, you're literally able to start talking about other things. What Maybe it's back to the billing. Or maybe it's about their coding. Maybe it's about how they need to go back and collect on old, old uh, debts that are owed to the doctor. So we've got everything you hear that you might need. And Patrick, we can even open up the physician's toolbox because there's so much more there that uh, someone could actually get involved with there. So that's that's you can't just go in there with just being a a, a one man band type show. You've got to have all these different services. Patrick, I know you like this one right here. Reason number six about listening to dream stealers, and this is a little bit more about your story. Tell us real quickly as we kind of go through this one, this section here. Yeah, in 1987, my wife started doing medical billing. Uh, she was asked by a friend if she knew how to do it, and she said no, but he said, well, come into my office, I'll show you how to do it. It was amazing how quickly she was up and running and doing this billing for him. Folks, it's not, uh, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. It is very easy to learn how to do the technical aspects of this, but she didn't know how to build her business, and so I had to reprogram her brain. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I had to reprogram my own brain. So I actually studied what it took to go out and build a profitable business. I wrote a book, uh, How to Reprogram Yourself for Success, and along with some other things that we use to train our uh, licensees, we get you past those dream stealers that are out there. This is your brother-in-law that says, oh, you shouldn't be getting in that business. Doctors don't need help. They do it themselves. So uh, those dream stealers can hold you back, and I, uh, I didn't let that happen for us, and, uh, and we can teach you how to get past that as well. But that's one reason a lot of people fail in business. And then just ignoring the windows of opportunity that are out there right now. There's all kinds of things right now happening, including the 77 million baby boomers uh, that are retiring uh, into the medical system, of course, every day, 10,000 a day, retire into it. That's that many more people. Then there's the uh, 40 million or so uninsured. Who knows what that number really is, Eric? Wow. It could be 20, 30, 40. There's a lot of people that are getting in, into uh, the doctor's office who weren't going to the doctor as often. Those are windows of opportunity, folks. This is a, Eric, I call it the perfect storm. Then you wow. add in the, the new codes that came into effect in October, the ICD-10 codes, uh, and all the electronic medical records that was required. Uh, it's just amazing the doctors are overwhelmed they don't know what to do and so take advantage of that folks 2016 could be your year to uh, make it big in the healthcare industry and we can help you do that yeah and, and, and every every window of opportunity that we Patrick just went through right here are these windows of opportunity that were actually discussed in that that article that we just read there from the physicians practice website so again folks go back through there but Speaking of just the ICD-10s, Patrick, I know a lot of people have asked, well, ICD-10 is already come and gone. It, how, how, how am I going to be, how is this going to even help me? Folks, you're going to still find doctors that are not properly billing. And it, it's amazing that with our support with you, we can help show the doctor how easily it is to utilize our system and then get the correct codes back out. Folks, we've been ICD-10 ready since back of October 2014. So we're well ahead of the game. And so if we were that far ahead of the game, all the new things that are coming out in 2016 were certainly uh, ready to go. All right, Patrick, let's get through reason number eight, limiting your clientele and your market territory. Uh, you know, this is just interesting. People, uh, we just had someone ask in this question box, and I'll, I'll pull that up. Uh, Marcus is asking, uh, is the service limited to physician billing? 
What about dental and counseling, et cetera? Well, Patrick, you want to answer that real quickly? Uh, yes. Uh, my wife and I actually looked into doing uh, billing for dentists, and let me tell you, that is a whole nother world. Uh, besides, there's not that many people who uh, have you know insurance with, with uh, dental, and so dentists don't see near as many patients as doctors do. So we teach people to go out, look at all the different specialties, though, that you can do billing for. Anybody who's an MD that has MD after their name, you can do their billing. And we can teach you how to reach out to all these different specialties. Uh, don't focus on something as small as the dental field right now. Once, once I tell people, once you've signed up, all the doctors in your area will teach you how to do the dental billing if that's what you want to do, because we do have software that's available for that too. But uh, they also limit themselves, Eric, in the physical geographical territory because this is not like a franchise where you're limited to the first, uh, you know, two miles uh, around you. Your territory, folks, in this business is literally the entire United States of America, uh, all 50 states. You can have doctors anywhere and everywhere, and we do have licensees, by the way, that have doctors uh, in several states. We, yeah, absolutely, and they're on one side of the world, coast, and they, their doctor could be on the other side of, of the coast of, of, of America. So literally, you have ex exactly what Patrick says. There is no limited territory for you to actually go in. You may have, uh, you may be in Pennsylvania and you may have relatives or uh, a, uh, a hotshot brother-in-law or sister-in-law that is a, a, a pharmaceutical rep in Arizona and end up getting a doctor there. Uh, or, or you may, whatever you might have, a friend that is a sales rep of some sort. So you, there is just all different types of scenarios of what could happen to you uh, by not, for us, not limiting your territory. Uh, Patrick, reason number nine, undercharging and underestimating the profit potential. So let's talk about that because people can literally go to our website to find this out. Yeah, I think people overlook this, but uh, Eric's showing you right there on that screenshot there that's under the income potential, there's a medical uh, billing income calculator. And folks, we already have some numbers dropped in there, but uh, let's just do this, Eric. Uh, people can look at this themselves, but basically it's based on the number of doctors that you want as clients, the average number of uh, you know claims that they'll be doing, the patients that they'll be seeing, and so forth, and what, what you'll be charging. But if you hit the submit button on this by typing in your numbers, you'll see how much money you can make. And folks, this is based on one doctor uh, that we've got right here in this one. This one shows... Uh, what is that number? It's so tiny on my phone here, I can't even see it. <laughs> well, the, the, the total uh, yearly income is 31200 Now, that's with one doctor seeing 20 patients a day, open five days a week. You're charging a an average 6% on $100 for each of those claims. So, folks, $2,600 a month is, is average of what you might be making with just a single doctor. Uh, so imagine if you were able to get two doctors, three doctors, four doctors, uh, you know, you could be at, uh, you know, $10,000 a month pretty quickly. And Patrick, $10,000 a month um, is, it, that is that type of in, uh, executive income that I think a lot of people would like to have. Well, and that's why we don't do any projections. We let you plug in the numbers here yourself because it literally is, uh, there is no limit to, to what your income could be. But that's based on a lot of things, folks, and not everybody makes $10,000 a month in this business. Uh, there are people who are making a whole lot more than that, but right. uh, it's all up to you as an individual. It's your business, and you can build it as big uh, as you wish or keep it as small as you wish. Sure. All right, let's get to this last one, and we we'll, we'll, might have some time here at the end to take a, a few last-minute questions. But reason number 10, failing to educate your clients on your products and your services. And again, <laughs> this one, <coughs> excuse me, illustrates that this is not the way that you want to educate your doctors. <laughs> no, we have another way of educating them, and here's what it boils down to, the bottom line. Folks, doctors are not that smart of a business people, even though they're very educated, of course, they don't know how to run a business and show a profit. We can show them how to bottom line their business, increase their business. Well, in this case, for example, here's one of our uh, sample uh, patient practice revenue reports. Uh, what is that? $150,000 a year increase. Yeah, uh, yeah, 150000 more. Uh, there's a, a, you know, what could possibly be done 
with the, the projections that are have. And this is a spreadsheet that basically you're going to collect these numbers from the doctor. How many claims are you doing a month? What's the average bill claim? We've got all of that. What's their approximate rejection rate? This one's 34%. Uh, and, and you just kind of work your way through this, and then we've already got some numbers built in there. Like you can put, you can average out the your potential rejection rate. You can make it two percent. You can make it maybe three percent. But you can see there's just an increase of twelve thousand five hundred dollars per month, folks. I, I think I'm going to go back to Bill's question. I think why a lot of people might fail in this business is that they just don't do this job correctly. Uh, they try to sell the software. That's a no-no. We're, we're not in software sales. We're in selling doctors their cash. And when you can keep it, the cash, and run the these types of reports, you're going to find, you can't tell me you're not going to find a doctor that when you can show them that you can give them a possible increase of about $12,000 more a month, that they're going to say, Bill, no, nope, I don't want to do business with you. Yeah, this is from their own figures, by the way, folks. We teach you how to get those figures from them and plug them into this uh, software to come up with this report. So it's not figures you're making up. It's their own figures, so it's hard right. to argue with it. Right. Uh, this is another way to, to lay it out. This is could be utilizing their current system and then utilizing a, an ABS billing specialist or medical revenue manager, and you'll see again here, there's an increase of 41%. Now, this was an actual uh, licensee that actually gave this to it because this is how they presented it to their, their potential doctor. Yeah, this is one is, uh, you know, we said earlier the average is 34% rejection rate. This, this medical practice had a 60% rejection rate with their current billing situation, and our licensee came in, dropped that down to 2%, as you can see, we brought another half million dollars a year revenue into that uh, uh, that practice. Right. All right. So this is a little bit. Uh, we I think Patrick, we've made it. I'm looking at the clock. We've got about uh, two minutes left here at the top of the hour. Uh, this is a little bit of time where we can take in some more questions and answers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, see what else I can find here. So. Um, Wow, yeah, while you're looking, why are you looking at that, Eric? Why don't you put up uh, the next slide there about the uh, the guarantee? Uh, yeah. People can be reading that. Uh, it's something we came up with a few years back, and folks, it's as plain and simple as it sounds. And that is, if you come through our training, don't like what you see, don't want to be in this business, just tell us. We'll give you every penny of your licensee fee back. Now, I don't know of any other company in America that will do that, Eric, but uh, we know what we have, and uh, we're willing to do that for folks. Yeah. Folks, we know, know that you're listening to us over the internet, you're talking to us over the phone. Come and see us. Whether you come see us at our office or whether you come see us during the training class, come and see us. Patrick, I think we got through all the questions. Uh, I thought there might have been some more down there towards the bottom, but let's put this date back up here, February the 8th through the 12th. Uh, you wanted to kind of address the date being in February, not one in January. You want you want to talk about that real quickly, and we'll yeah. The reason we do that, folks, is because that that may seem like a little ways out, but believe me, that will come real fast once you get past the uh, the holiday season. And of right. course, that that first week or so of the first of the year, uh, you really don't have that much time. So begin doing your due diligence. Uh, try to get your paperwork into us. At least reserve your seat in that class. Because this one will fill up, Eric. I, I'm convinced that this will be a full 20 people in the class. And, and uh, folks, the sooner you get in your reservation, of course, the sooner you can make sure that you have a seat in it. Then work on your funding if you need to to get the funding to us and get everything completed before you get here. But, uh, Eric, that February 8th, is uh, that's going to be a great class and a great time to get started in this industry. Well, we already know that there were some people that couldn't make the December class, and they've already rolled over to the February class. So... Uh, I, I already know by yeah, talking to all of us that we, we've already got almost, probably half full already. Yeah, yeah, it's close to half full, I think, right now. So that means there's only uh, probably maybe eight to ten seats left in there. So, folks, again, if you think this is something you want to do, continue doing your due diligence. Continue being on these webinars every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Central Time. Uh, learning and educating yourself on the business. Ask all the questions you want to your ABS uh, business development coach, we call them, and we'll be glad to answer all your questions. We know this business is not for everybody, but we know this. If you do enough research, you'll decide 
probably that it's least worth your time coming down here, spending that week with us, and learning whether or not we really have something that uh, will fit your lifestyle. Patrick, I'm going to let you get back to that training class. I know you want to go see those folks in there and, and visit with them before the end of the day. So thank you for joining us from the, from the training. All right. Thanks, Eric. Yep. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you hopefully next Wednesday at, at our Wednesday webinar. Thank you so much.